hope everybody's having an awesome day. Let's go ahead and jump right in with our catchphrase. And how about this? If you've been following me all week long, then you might know our catchphrase and you might know the sign language for it too. So instead of me saying it twice, I'm only going to say it once. Let's see if you can do it with me. But I'll go slowly in case you're still trying to learn it. I make messes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Awesome, guys, that was amazing. Before we get started today, just a shout out to our sponsor, Dixon Ticonderoga. You know what? We're going to be using a lot of construction paper today. Now, if you don't have construction paper, don't you worry about it. I'm gonna show you a bunch of other things you can use instead. But my favorite construction paper is True Ray construction paper. And do you know who makes True Ray? Dixon Ticonderoga does. So thank you guys for being a sponsor of this lesson. Let's talk about the other supplies you're going to need besides construction paper. So let's see what I've got. You're going to need glue, you'll be needing scissors, and I was trying to think of some things that you might have laying around the house. Something that you might have are old envelopes where mom and dad get bills or things like that. Now, before you go open it up mom and dad's mail, make sure you get permission first. You don't need what's inside, you just need the envelope. Some other things you could use are just newspaper or scrap papers or even paper bags would be great for what we're using today. So have a really open mind when it comes to collage. That's right, today we are making a collage. And I kind of feel like I have to say it like that because did you know the word collage is a French word? It means paper and glue, or as I like to say, pepe and glue. I don't know how to speak French, but I do know how to sound fancy. At least that's what I'm calling it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We are using paper and glue and scissors to make a collage of a robot. So before we start, let's talk about those elements of art. We'll be using lime, shape, lots of shapes. Color, baby, color, lots of color too. Form, ooh, you could do shading on your collage to make your robot look 3D. You do shading with value, texture. Oh, we could add some texture today. I have an idea for that. And space. Space is how you show distance or depth in a work of art. We haven't really focused on that much this week, except when we were doing shading. Shading helps you show space or depth in your work of art. So let me think, what could our word of the day be? Why not collage? Whoop, whoop. Although I'm gonna be saying it a lot, which means there's gonna be a lot of whoop, whoop in, which also means it's an opportunity to drive those around us crazy. Perfect, this is what I say, perfecto. All right, let's get those pinkies out and do our pinky promise. Ah, pinky promise that today, while I am working on my collage, I will have a positive attitude. I will keep a smile on my face, maybe even a smile on my robot, but I'll keep my mind in a really good place. Mwah! All right, guys, let's get to robot collage making our last robot project of the week. Ugh, if that bums you out as much as it bums me out, don't worry. You can always go back and watch all of the older videos to make more robots and stay tuned for what our theme is for next week. All right, let's get started. Before we get started on making a collage robot, I thought it would be really fun to try creating some papers of our own also to create our robot with. You already should have, if you have it, construction paper. If you don't have construction paper, no big deal. You could always scrounge up some of those envelopes and things like that I was mentioning. Or you can try your hand at making your own papers for collage. So I'm gonna scoop my robots out of the way. Ugh, one of them was accidentally glued to the table. 
And what I'm going to do is make some of my own paper. So I'm gonna start with a plain old white piece of paper, but you know what? You could also start with construction paper, even if it's paper that's been cut into or is a scrap. So basically grab what you have on hand. Newspaper would also be great. Now that I have my nice white piece of paper, I'm just gonna fold it in half going up, matching those edges up really good before smoothing down the bump. Now my paper has been folded in half. Now I'm going to take one side of my paper, walk it over to the other and smooth down that bump. There we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open my paper twice. And what you're going to notice is that now my one piece of paper, I'm gonna flip it over to the clean earth side, has four rectangles, a little spot for me to create a design in each place. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is use some of my markers and I'm going to practice some of my elements of art. I think what I'll do is draw a series of lines. Lines is an element of art. Let me think, I know there are straight lines since this one is slanted, we call a diagonal, zigzag lines. Zigzag lines are said to give something energy and look at it, it's already a lot different than that calm and smooth diagonal line. Suddenly the lines have gone energetic. These are diagonal lines too, but because they're connected, they create a zigzag. Ooh, I'm gonna go with a loop-de-loop. -loop. I love making loop-de-loops because it's like practicing cursive writing. It looks like a bunch of E's and L's all lined up in a row. If I made this into a pattern, then I could start my diagonal lines over again, get my energizing zigzags in there. But I bet you could think of a lot other kind of lines that you could draw, spirals and wavy lines like a roller coaster. Oops, I just changed up my pattern. I could even have lines that are doing the same thing. Those are called parallel lines. I know you'll think of something. If you wanted to, you could now even go back and add a little bit of color. Add some more designs in between or some more lines. You are the artist. You can take as long as you like to create your pattern paper or you could just work on it for a short amount of time. Why we're making these different papers is because this will give you a lot of choices when it comes to working on your collage. So that's why I'm gonna start with some simple lines, lines, lines to create a really cool paper for my collage. All right, I think that one's done. Now what I'm gonna do is a little bit of a texture rubbing. Now, if you remember, we did a texture rubbing on Wednesday when we made our coleograph. A texture rubbing begins with something like a texture. And this texture I found in my kitchen. It was a little bag that was holding some vegetables. So I just cut the vegetables out and now I have this really cool texture to do a rubbing. But if you don't happen to have one of these, think about anything that has a surface. The bottom of your shoe, the wall, the floor, maybe even some sidewalk outside. Take your paper, either set it on a texture or put a texture underneath. If my texture will cooperate. There we go, lay it flat. And just like when we did our coleograph, have your extra hand, hold it really still. Take a crayon that doesn't have any paper on it. We call those our naked crayons and we're not going to color with them. So we're gonna lay them down like they're shh. They're sleeping y'all, tone it down. So now that I've got a sleeping crayon, I'm just going to do a little bit of rubbing and look at that. Now you can see the texture underneath. The key is to really hold that paper still and also make sure you press nice and hard. You could even move the texture a little bit, try a different color and then you'll get even more texture and more color. Cool, look at this. I have two completely different pieces of paper that'll be great for collage. All right, now I think I'll do my trick of making painty kind of papers with my markers. I'm gonna start with two of my primary colors. The primary colors are the colors that you can use to make all of the other colors in the rainbow. Primary means first. You must have the primary colors in order to make all the other colors in the rainbow. 
I'm going to take these two primary colors. Do you know what these two primary colors will make? Not sure? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of make a squiggly, wondery kind of line on my paper. It's a line that's going for quite the walk. Yes, I think my line is confused. Where are you going? I'm gonna have it go around the parameter of the paper and boop, connect right there. Maybe now my blue line can also take a little bit of a walk. Isn't it cool to see how lines look when they overlap each other? Yep, and sometimes when that blue is overlapping with that yellow, it's making green. But let's help it out a little bit by adding some water. And now remember, with this water trick, you kind of have to let the water and the marker have a minute and kind of work on turning that marker into a paint. It takes a little bit for that marker to turn into a kind of paint, so if you don't see it happen right away, just be patient, let it do its thing, and come back to it. And then you'll notice that we'll start to do that thing that we call a marker bleed, because the marker color is away or bleeding. So there we go. I've painted over almost all of my lines and I think I'll take two other primary colors. I think this time I'll give yellow and red a shot. Any idea what might happen here? Let's try and find out. Okay, I think I'm going to do a plaid. A plaid is when you have vertical lines and they're crisscrossed over by a group of horizontal lines. So I've got my red vertical lines, crisscross them over with some yellow lines. And even when I get that yellow going through some of that red, I can already see what secondary color it's making. The primary colors make secondary colors. Look, you can already see the colors are starting to spread and bleed and blend together, making a brand new color, which green. So now we know yellow and blue make green. Let's see what happens here. I'm gonna move my cup over a little bit so my big old arm doesn't keep getting in the way. There we go. Now, I wonder what secondary color we will get here but it looks like I'm gonna have to give those markers a moment with the water, give them time to bleed and ooze out. Now, since these papers are wet, since I have added water, I'm going to need to let them dry for a little bit before I can use them for my collage, which is why I did these first. Okay, so there we go. I think you can probably figure out what secondary color it makes. It's making orange. How cool is that? All right, I'm gonna scoot this guy out of the way, let it dry for a little bit while I work on my collage. When you're creating a collage, you need a base. A base is your piece of paper or your surface that you're going to be building your collage on. Your base could be a piece of construction paper like me, it could be a piece of loose leaf paper, newspaper, a cereal box, whatever you might happen to have. You could even create your own background by using a full sheet of paper to do one of these cool tricks. But for now, I'm gonna use my blue piece of paper and I've got all of my construction paper, my papers that I've made, and my envelopes to create my collage with. But I'm pretty sure you could track down a whole lot more to work with. Now what I need to do is kind of imagine what I want my robot to look like. Today, I'm not going to be drawing my robot first. I'm going to be using my scissors to draw with, which means I'm going to be cutting out my shapes kind of like we did when we made our choreograph. But when I'm cutting out my shapes, I'm not going to be drawing my shapes on here first. Nope, I think I'm just going to draw with my scissors, meaning I'm just going to cut. But if I'm cutting things out, I need to cut big because I can always cut things a little bit smaller, but what I can't do is take a small piece of paper that I've cut out and make it bigger. So I think I'm gonna start with a nice rectangle for the head. Again, my scissors are always pointed away from me. My extra hand is helping me by holding the paper and turning it. Now I could turn my scissors this way, but I think it would be easier for me if I started right down there. There we go. Let's see, 
Okay, I think that would make a good shape for a head. And before I glue anything down, I'm just going to kind of lay everything out first to really see how it looks. I've got my envelope here and I really want to use this guy right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off the edge of the envelope. And by trimming off the edges of the envelope, it will separate those two pieces of paper. There we go, cool. And now I have my fun little window that I was going for. But would you take a look at that? Look at all those cool lines and designs that I can use for my robot. So I'm definitely hanging on to this. I could use it for this robot or for any other collages. It might be a good idea for you to keep all of your papers that you really like, all of the ones that you've made, keep them in a little folder. So anytime you wanna make a collage, whether it's a robot or something else, you've got them. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. I think I want this to be the torso of my robot. And again, knowing that I can't magically make something that's too small bigger, I'm gonna cut this out kind of big. I see I've got some torn edges here, so I'm just going to trim that off. There we go. Move this out of my way, rotate that guy, and cut like that. Cool, all right, now let me think. If this is the torso, it could go this way. It could go that way. Um, I think I kind of like it like this. So, so far, this is what I'm thinking. His head's a little bit bigger than his body, but you know what? I like that. Okay, now I'm gonna need to think about the arms and the legs. I've got some of my really fun papers that I've made, so maybe I'll use this for some of my legs. To get this piece of paper out of here, I'm just going to follow along my folded line. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one in half and then cut this in half again. Okay, now I've got this really great piece of paper that I wanna use, I think for, you know, I think I'm gonna use this for my arms. Now I want my arms to be the same. I want them to look the same. And instead of trying to draw and cut it out exactly the same twice, here's a trick that you can do. Fold your paper in half. This way you only have to cut it out once. I want my arms to be kind of rounded or curved. So I'm gonna hold my paper right here. I'm gonna take my scissors and with slow, safe scissors, I'm cutting an arch like a rainbow. Now, this is how I am choosing to make my robot arms, but hello, you're the artist, so you can make yours any way you like. This is just what I'm going with. All right, so I've got a couple of these arches for my arms. Let's see. He can be like, ah, he's got both of his hands on his head. I cannot compute. I cannot compute. Or maybe he's got his hands on his hips. Or maybe he's like got one hand up, one hand down. You know, I really like the ah kind of robot because that's sometimes how I feel. So I'm going to do that right now, but nothing's gluing in place. I'm just laying it down. And I really think I'm going to use this for his legs. Again, I want two legs. I want them the same. So you know what? I'm folding it in half. I think I'm gonna cut it like this. And then I think I'm gonna cut a couple of smaller pieces because I want his legs to be able to bend. So maybe I'll put one here and then I'll bend it right there. And then I can do one here. Oh, it looks like he's dancing. Yes, I love it. Okay, now I've got these guys, which to me, these guys could make good, big, stompy robot feet, don't you think? So maybe I'll kind of lay this out here. The best part about collage is just kind of laying everything out, playing with a bunch of different ideas and seeing what you like, okay? I'm digging it. And you know what I feel like my robot needs today? I feel like he needs a bow tie. So I think I'm gonna cut out a little circle from this pattern paper that I made earlier. So it's pretty much the dry version of that one. I'm gonna cut out a nice big circle, keeping it big first. There we go. That's where his little tie is gonna go. And I want two triangles for the bow. So I'm just gonna fold my paper in half. That's my cool trick so that I only have to do something once. 
Snip, let's see how that's gonna look. Slide that underneath. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Move this arm out of the way a little bit. Okay, now my favorite part, working on the face. Now, you could make any kind of face you like, but what you might wanna think about while you're putting things together is something called contrast. Notice that I'm not using any more green paper on the green face because I want the eyes to show up. If I used green on green, well, suddenly you wouldn't be able to see it anymore. So that's why it's important to think of something that's a little bit different. And when you think of something that's different, especially if it's completely opposite, that's called contrast. All right, I think I'll try to use some of my construction paper that I had over here, some of my scraps that I'm using. Oh, I always like to look for the small pieces of scraps because those small little guys, they don't get enough love. They usually end up in the recycle bin and that's a shame because they can still make my artwork look pretty amazing. I'm gonna have him looking over there. Yep, oh, and I think I'll give him a couple of eyebrows since he's kind of like, I am losing my mind. He's got a little confused eyebrows. Oh, but you know what? You can't see them very well because they blend in with that background. So maybe I'll try cutting into some of my red construction paper and see how that looks. My favorite part is coming up with all the different details for my robot. I can use these as little parts on his body. So I'm just moving things around, changing my composition. Yeah, I think that'll show up a lot better. Let's see how these eyebrows look. Now, when everything's in place, I'm going to go ahead and start gluing things down. Now, when I glue things down, it can get a little bit confusing because I don't know what I've glued down. Everything so far looks like it's been glued down. Well, here's a way to kind of keep it all in place. Why don't you start at the top and then work your way down as you glue. I think that's what I'm going to do right now. When you're gluing, remember that you only need a dot, not a lot. And on the face of my robot, I decided to go ahead and start on the parts of the face, just gluing the tiniest pieces first and then working my way down. Remember, you don't need a lot of glue. If it doesn't look like it's sticking, then maybe it just needs a little bit more grab time. If you don't have glue, glue sticks would work great too. If any of the little pieces fall off when you flip it over to add more glue to the other side, remember, you don't need to add more glue. Just lay it back down and leave it be just needs a little bit more grab time. Okay, I'm gonna finish up gluing down all of my parts right now. All right guys, I think my robot is complete. I do have a lot of a paper mess everywhere, but any of those bigger pieces, I can now save, put in my little collage folder that I can make. That way I can reuse any of these anytime I wanna make another robot or make any sort of collage, but I'm pretty happy with how he turned out. I made a couple other robots too just to give you more ideas the possibilities for robot making are endless i hope that you've had a lot of fun during robot week next week we'll be up to making a whole lot more new stuff so make sure you stay tuned see you real soon guys <laughs>